Hello. In earlier sessions I've looked at objects buried in the ground that we can be reasonably certain that the purpose was ritual, that they were votive offerings. I'm going to look at two more interesting finds, both date to the British Iron Age, both discovered in the year 2000 and both fit this category. Now a metal detectorist was searching a hillside outside of Winchester and he found a brooch. He thought it might be gold, so he contacted the Portable Antiquities Scheme Finds Liaison Officer for Hampshire and she confirmed that it was gold and she thought it might be Iron Age. Now if so, this is a rare find. We only know of a handful of gold brooches from the British Iron Age. It was sent off to the British Museum who agreed that uh, it was indeed Iron Age. Now the detectorist went back to the site. He was asked to see if he could find anything else and if so to mark the site precisely to allow for further investigation. He found three more brooches. He also found two gold bracelets and two gold torques of a unique and flexible design. There was also a chain which would have joined two of the brooches. This is how we think the ensemble would have been worn. The bracelets were of a type that was fashionable between around 75 BC and 25 BC, which seemed to securely date this particular find. Now torques are neck rings. They were worn by the Celtic elite. The Roman historian Dio Cassius tells us that Boudicca wore a torque. On the life-size statue of the dying Gaul in the Capitoline Museum in Rome, he is depicted wearing a torque. And this type of torque is typical, stiff. They're quite difficult to put on and to take off. And every time you do so, then you're putting stress on the metal. And many of those that we find show signs of wear and many of so signs of, of having to be repaired. Now, by contrast, the torques found at Winchester here were, would have been much more comfortable to wear and the terminals pinned together. One was longer than the other. Uh, the larger one was 19 inches long and weighed a little bit over a pound. And the shorter one was 17 inches long and weighed three quarters of a pound. So were these a matching pair for a man and wife? His and hers, if you like. They're made of fine gold wire that has been very skillfully woven together. It's a technique that is more commonly associated with jewellery from the classical world of the Eastern Mediterranean. Now we know there was contact particularly between Southern Britain during the Iron Age and the Roman Empire. So might these have been some sort of special gifts from a Roman patron? Or are we looking at an artisan who had learned their skills in Byzantium and brought them to Britain to work? The coroner's inquest, they were declared treasure as defined by the Treasure Act. And the British Museum wanted to acquire them and they valued them at £350,000. At the time, this was the largest sum that had ever been paid out under the terms of the 1996 Treasure Act. And that reward was then shared between the finder and the landowner. Who originally owned this jewellery? Has to be somebody very important. And why was it buried? A study of the site found no trace of burials or cremations, which seemed to rule out grave goods. And the clue is really, I think, in the situation, an exposed hillside away from settlement. This is where ritual offerings are generally found. The Snettisham Great Talk, one of several valuable finds in different deposits, but all on the same exposed hillside in Norfolk. It fits the pattern for objects found elsewhere that were buried for ritual purposes. Now a local archaeology group were field walking on a hill overlooking the Welland Valley near the village of Hallerton in rural East Leicestershire and they found a scatter of Iron Age and Roman pottery which encouraged them to follow up with metal detecting 
and that turned up some Iron Age and Roman coins and they called in Leicester University to excavate and the team found 13 separate coin deposits. The coins are very congealed and cemented together so each deposit was lifted on block and encased in plaster. Sent off then to the British Museum to be cleaned and conserved. In total there were over 5,000 silver and gold coins. There was also a silver gilt Roman parade helmet and some jewellery and one or two other objects. Most of the coins dated to between AD 10 and AD 60, just before and around the time of the Roman conquest of Britain. Most of the coins could be attributed to the local Coriel Torvi tribe. There was one silver Roman coin which dated to 211 BC, which made it the oldest Roman coin yet found in Britain. And there were some gold coins in the find that were inscribed. On one side, C-A-M-U, Camu, Camulodonum. This identified the mint as Colchester. And on the other side, C-U-N-O, an abbreviation for the name Cunobelin. Now, Cunobelin was a powerful ruler who governed much of southeastern Britain between about AD 10 and AD 40. Um, the name is Britonic. Cuno means dog, Bellino means strong, so Cunobelin, strong as a dog. And this man, Cunobelin, uh, was the inspiration for Shakespeare's Cymbeline. We know his power extended over much of southeastern Britain. The find at Hallerton suggests maybe his influence reached up into the East Midlands. Now, further work at the site revealed that it had originally been surrounded by a ditch and all the coin deposits had been found at the entrance. They also found pits with animal bones, mostly pigs, so evidence of feasting. All the indications are pointing to an open air shrine with ritual deposits during communal ceremonial events. And in 2012, a silver fingering was found not far away and that was inscribed T-O-T, which is believed to stand for two Tartis, a Celtic deity which the Romans equated with, with Mars. So perhaps two Tartis is the god who was venerated at the Hallerton Shrine. Now many of the finds are now on display at Harborough Museum in Market Harborough, based in a former corset factory, including the Roman helmet. Also on display is the skeleton of a large dog. Think German shepherd sized. It's one of three that had been found at this site and it is believed they were sacrificed perhaps as part of a ceremony to protect and guard the treasure. Do you know making ritual offerings might seem a little bit odd to us today but we still throw coins in wishing wells and fountains so we're not so dissimilar from people in the past. And next time I'm going to look at items that were buried in order to keep them safe. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click the notification bell to be informed when the next video is published.